Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Somebody requested that I do a bit of torpedo boating, because torpedo boats haven't really made an appearance lately. So I thought, you know what, we're going to be doing torpedo boat juicing against the Germans. I'm going to be using the French myself, starting range 10,000 meters, effective starting era 1900s, and the AI and myself both get 5 torpedo boats and 5 transports. This might not necessarily seem fair, because the AI is not great at managing their ships, but the transports could be armed, and the transports could therefore be pretty deadly to a torpedo boat. So, let's design a French torpedo boat and go on the offensive against the Germans. Now, these tiny little things unfortunately don't carry a lot of displacement. Uh, you can max the torpedo boat standard out to 500 tons. The torpedo boat destroyer, um, it's in a bit of a bind because it seems to say it, you can do 600, but the moment you slide it above 600, it says no, 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 you can't do that. Uh, okay, so I guess we're just stuck with either a 600 ton torpedo boat destroyer or a 500 ton torpedo boat. Now it is in the 1900s, so don't expect anything uh, very spectacular, nor necessarily quick. Uh, <laughs> nor something that necessarily fits. Apparently you cannot have the dual funnel in combination with the advanced tower one. Not even sure if I need it. Go with the multiple steam expansion engine. I'm oh, sorry, multiple expansion steam engine, induced boiler, 100% engine efficiency. There you go, you don't even need the advanced thing. Um, as for guns, let's see, we got the threes, the twos, and the Fours. The fours are only Mark II, not that effective. These have a rate of fire of 10.3. Uh, sorry, a reload of 10.3. So let's say that in 60 seconds, sort of, they do about 100 damage. Uh, sorry, not 100, about 85 damage. These things reload in 7 seconds. Can therefore fire 8.75 rounds a minute, but they do 9.5 damage. So I think that 3 inches, they will win out. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So 3 inch it is. We're going to have them on the bow and some on the stern. Oh, sorry, on the, the port and starboard side. And they do require a torpedo launcher of your picking. And let's try and put that thing a little bit closer towards the middle of the ship. We have another couple of guns on the port and starboard. Now then, we are going to be firing gun cotton, ballastite, or lidite 1. This thing does 65% more shell damage, but of course comes with a pretty substantial 40% flash fire explosion chance. Or rather, a plus 40% chance. I think the lidites, however are, <laughs> even from a 3 inch, pretty deadly. Enhanced loading puts me at a 9.46 rounds a minute. And let's see if we can keep these things alive. Ish. What? <laughs> I didn't catch this before. <laughs> We're going to be <laughs> using a 12 inch armor belt. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to be... <laughs> This is a bug. I'm not sure if the devs have discovered this, but you can put a maximum of one and a half inches of armor on a destroyer, like a modern 1940 destroyer, but you could put a 12 inch armor belt on a torpedo boat. Oh, this is perfect. Seriously, I don't really prepare these vids that well, um, as you can tell, because <laughs> otherwise I would have spotted this before. But this is hilarious. This is... <laughs> How? I just hope that the Germans don't get something similar. Um, if they do, it's going to be problematic. All right, 593 tons. I cannot put any other armor on the ship. Or... No. I cannot override it by clicking 2 and then typing or pressing enter. Uh, why this thing says 12, I don't know, but I think it's funny. Let's see if that actual... <laughs> If that 12 inch armor belt actually exists in combat. This is this is hilarious. If this would be working, let's see. Okay, here goes. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, this is a fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I'll help, probably have to send that into the devs, but... <laughs> Here comes the 12 inch armor belt on the DD. Uh, sorry, on the TB, not even the DD. My transports are not packing, at least not these two. This one is. Uh, four inch guns. And this one, no. And this one, yes, three inch guns. Now my objective is to sink their torpedo boats and their transports. And they are somewhere off to the north, but since I have no radar and a very low spotting capability, I'm actually not able to see anything until they uh, pretty much pop into view. Let's see if I can get a nice thumbnail. There. If you have the game, by the way, and you want to take a screenshot, press Control, Shift, Alt, Z. And that way you can turn off the HUD. And F11 is for taking screenshots. Is everybody, yeah, everybody's disallowed from using torpedo tubes. Speed, 32, 32, 32. Very good. I want you to slow down a touch. Oh, we spotted them. 2.7. I really want an ID on these guys. I want to see how much armor the Germans get. I want to see if this is an overall bug or just something that hits one particular nation. You may open fire. I'm sorry, we're not uh, British, we're French. We're desperately trying to bring those three inches on the port side and the bow to come about to the target. But... I'm not sure if they actually will. Some of these guns are firing. But the T2? Oh, there we go. Just the bow gun? Yeah. Just the bow gun. Alright. The right. The Germans don't get this. So... Chance to pen 75%. They can pen everywhere but the belt. The belt's red. This 2 inch gun is supposed to do 5.8 inches of armor pen. Um, I have 12 inches of belt armor, so yeah, good luck penning that. And the torpedoes are not yet in range, but barely. We're getting there. Fire and flooding. These guys, however, are packing some serious bulkheads. They got maximum bulkheads. Where is the other group at? There you are. But seriously, 12 inch armor belt on the transport. Or on a torpedo boat. Why not? Let's follow this engagement in close. Come on. I think the turret rotation speed is so... Ooh, crap. So bad. Yeah, I'm going to be in, problem, in serious trouble here. And I'm stopping directly in front of the torps. This is expert level gameplay here. No, actually, I'm not. <gasps> oh, I shouldn't have survived that. With the level of braking that I did, I should have stopped right in front of the torps. How exactly I got away with it, I simply don't know. Now, the S4 has detected the torpedo launch from the T2. And is turning back to port. T1, I want you to engage that one. I want the Caracua to go after these guys here. This is a transport. I have not yet been ID'd, but you can just visually see if they're packing or not. This one is not. This transport here? Uh, nope. This transport here? Nope. And our transports are... I don't know, they seem fairly far away from the fight. Yeah, 6.8. In this era, that is a pretty serious distance. Now, the Karakwa seems to have the S4 on the ropes. The S4, of course, doing a perfect dodge. 
But it seems like they are unable to do any kind of damage against my torpedo boat. How fast are yours? 27 knots. That's still pretty fast. Uh, launch the tor target this one. This is going to be an actual joust. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Throw the engines into reverse. Maximum port turn. No! Boom, boom. Huge explosion. The S3 could have dodged, but didn't. Okay. Those hits look magnificent. Unsurprisingly, the T1 has died. And... Yeah, you're still reloading your torpedo launcher. And with a dual torpedo launcher, you are not able to launch particularly quickly. So I can probably exploit that. Oh, shit! Oh, 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 oh. The issue is, with these little torpedo boats, you need to manage all of them. You need to micro every single torpedo boat. If you don't, then they have a fairly short lifespan. Also, I think throwing my engines into reverse is problematic, because it did severe damage to these engines. And as opposed to diesels, it's not something that you can quickly fix. So, I think the T2 is going to be in trouble. It's trying to get up to 3.2 knots. The engines have been damaged, but arguably not critically so. They're still very much hurting. Alright, we got the S2 over here coming in. So if the Kakwa turn away, because I kind of have an idea what the S2 is going to do. It could involve torpedoes. Oh, they destroyed the torpedo launcher. That's what you get when you don't put 12 inches of armor belt on, or 12 inches of armor onto your torpedo launcher. As one does. Target the S4. And start taking down some of their torpedo boats. Not you. The S1 seems pretty vulnerable because it already launched its torpedoes. I'm going to slow you down to 26 knots. We have made contact with the enemy, so there's not really that much of a requirement to go at massive speeds. Oh. The T2 is now seriously flooding. S2 has just launched torpedoes. Four turn maximum. Cue the torpedo beats. Oh dear, turn. Well done. Not so well done. Oh, those triple salvos are very hard to dodge. And since they launched them at point blank range, I don't really get a lot of warning too. I think that the AI can win this. Because I only have two torpedo boats left. The T2 and the base Kakwa. Oh, sorry. The, yeah, the torpedo uh, from this one. Oh, no. The launcher got destroyed. That's you. That's problematic. Maybe this whole 32 knots thing is not great. No, I'll just throw a torpedo their way. They're pretty close together. If you don't hit one, you might accidentally hit the other. And credit to the AI, they still have all of their torpedo boats alive. Some of them, not by much, but sufficiently so. No, numb nuts. Don't launch it at the T2. Oh, the T2 got her engines fixed. She's maneuvering back at 21 knots. Or trying to get up to that. Hit, 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 hit. Missed. Unfortunate. I'm going to be putting one of these things down instead of just having them all half health or so. Focus fire on the S4. It has taken a lot of damage. We can probably take it down together. Now the armor belt is very well protected as you can see. None of those blocks seemingly have taken 
Lidite. None of those blocks have seemingly taken a lot of damage. Sorry, I think it popped another... Yep, there we go. <laughs> um, but the rest of the ship is not nearly as invulnerable. Good grief, how many turrets do you have left? Rephrase, how many... Do you have any turrets? No, you don't have any turrets left. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh no! No, no, no. Yeah, this is gonna end me. Yep, they got me. Alright, that's a good thing actually, because I want to see if it's just the French that get this weird armor belt. No! What? This, this works for every nation? Except for the AI. Yes. How? This makes no sense. Let's up the air a little. Yep. What the? Alright, well, let's try a different nation. Um, let's try using the front tower one. A standard funnel. And just a load of guns. One torpedo turret. And then... Pretty much as many two inches as I can fit. Unfortunately, that torpedo tube is sort of in the way. As I don't really know how to... Yeah. I don't really know how to make this thing work. Alright, let's not fire something that has my own ship explode. This has a lower ammo detonation chance. Flash fire chance is only 7.5. They're not as fun, but they'll get the job done. And then electro-hydraulic turrets? In 1906? I think I might have stumbled across a second bug. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be uh, as it is. What am I going to do with all that displacement? the more speed I tack on, the more problematic my turning circle will be. My turning circle currently is 266, and I would like to keep it somewhere like that. But I cannot make the ship any bigger. Like I could, I could tack on range, make these very long-range patrol boats, but beyond that, it, it doesn't really add anything. Heavy shells... Uh, make it a, a nice 18-inch torpedo tube with fast propulsion for a speed of 42 knots, which is pretty respectable. I don't know. What am I going to do with another 97 tons? No way. Okay. We're going to make them 37.5 knots. That's what we're doing. Small off uh, aft weight offsets. Not that bad. I can probably live with that. And let's see if all of these small two inches can make something work. The moment that I get into range, I'll probably have to slow down to about half speed. Just to make sure that I don't accidentally or intentionally run into torpedoes. Okay. Our torpedo boats are the Yalta, the Verona, the Scorpion, the Golka, and isolated here, the Anekria. Let's see if these guys can encounter the guys to the north, which is where the Germans are at. Once again, I have a 12-inch armor belt. For no particular reason. Um, line of breasts. This way we can have all ships engage more or less at the same time. Slowing the lead ship down. The rest of the ships should pick up their assigned spots. Actually, you. Join the rest of the div. Find a nice spot. And move to your assigned position. Oh, here they are. But this is a transport. That transport is going to be most unfortunate. I don't know how much damage I can do with a 2-incher, though. 54? With a small 2-inch gun? Alright, I'll take it. See, some stuff I still don't quite get. The 2-inch gun says I have 7.5 points of damage. That is, I believe, against a target that it actually penetrates. So if you have a target that you hit and you penetrate, you do 7.5 damage. 
No, says the game, you do 49 damage. Which is seven times that number. So I'm still not exactly sure what the whole deal is with the ability slash inability to set what sort of damage anything does. Let me see if I can take a... <laughs> How am I going to get all of those guns in the picture? Maybe something like this? Uh, without the HUD? Sorry, professional YouTuber at work here, don't worry. There. Now this is actually a pretty decent spot for me to start from, because now I still have the ability to slow some of my uh, torpedo boats down. Everybody focus fire on this little thing here. Use whatever to- ooh. Use whatever two inches in range and open up. I don't really trust the Verona or the Golka to not get hit. These things have a range of six kilometers? Well, we are a little advanced, or a little bit more advanced time-wise. Uh, detach the Golka, please. This is the S4, again with no armor belt. And four inch guns, three inch and twos. And once again, they have absolutely no chance to pen the armor belt, but they can pen everywhere else. Everywhere else is fair game. Rudder damage and flooding. Very good. Maxi bulkheads, though. These things are not going to let up that easily. Torpedoes inbound. Not exactly sure who you're trying to target. There is the Deutschland transport. The S4 is doing pretty poorly. It's probably being subjected by... Yeah, it's the Nakria and the Yalta working together to pump out as many of those two-inch shells as possible, and they reload in a little under five seconds. Let's see, the S3 should... Yeah, the S3 is empty. The S3 has already launched her torps. Its torps. So that means it's fair game. The S4 is going to just succumb to gunfire. Not quite expecting that. My torps are fast, 42 knots. You are not very fast, sir. What's your deal? AI bug? 14 knots? Even though you're supposed to be blisteringly quick. At 31.5. I'm going to be the boats here and here. Scorpions start turning that way. Destroy the main gun. Oh, you're the bigger ones, aren't you? No, you're not. It's getting pretty warm on the Russian ship over there. Boat. Um, if I can turn this thing well enough... I can throw a torpedo directly at the S3 as I'm passing it. Yeah, torpedo away. Angle is pretty terrible, but the S3 doesn't really have the turning circle to dodge. Not at that range. Hit. 1,289 damage. This thing is getting picked clean. Watch this. It's going to survive. The S3, with its maximum bulkheads, somehow sealed off the entirety of the stern of the ship. And uh, is probably going to be actually surviving this encounter. Don't know how. There we go. This one down to extensive fire. I was wondering how long you were going to last. We've got a random stopped torpedo boat over there. I'm thinking you might have torpedoed the Vorona. Oh, more Two more torps coming in from, I don't know, some torpedo boat that's hiding over there. Boom! Ammo detonation. So despite getting hit by a torpedo, and also 
Having an ammo detonation, it still wasn't dead. That is impressive. Alright, target the S5. Hard to port. The S5 doesn't have torpedoes ready either. That's fine. I don't mind that at all. Ah, there's the torpedo. Yeah, here they are. There and here. Okay, that's going to be your job. This time around, it seems like the enemy, despite having the same error as I do, does not have a leg to stand on. We're at 4k damage. They're at 145. They too have electro-hydraulical turrets? I thought that was some sort of high-end technology, but apparently not so much. Let's see if my flock of torpedo boats is still more or less in the right position. Target the uh, Wittelsbach. Deutschland. Deutschland is sinking. Golka, target the S2. Verona, continue your barrage on the S5. Which seems to have some issues with the fire raging out of control on just about half the ship. And it keeps getting worse. I think this isn't going to sink due to extensive fire. Two, three more compartments ought to do it. They're also flooding, but they don't really seem to be that much affected by that. Oh, 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 oh. Verona just got torpedoed by the S2, which is fair play. I wasn't micromanaging it. And I don't have a torpedo ready. The Verona is done. Does it matter if we torpedo this one? It has men in bulkheads. I'll torp it anyway. S5, there you go. Extensive fire. Ship overcome by fires. Let's zoom out a little. I still got the S1 out there. Ex extensive fire on the Wittelsbach as well. These things are just not capable of extinguishing all the fires that are set by the 2-inch guns fast enough. That's what's killing them. Here we go. Galka just launched her torpedo. She's now bringing all of her 2-inch guns around. The Hansa is just smack dead in the middle of, well, trouble. There's the torpid. That barely did anything. It's a 19,000 ton transport. But it is still an 18 inch torpedo against a ship that has no torpedo blister. A little underwhelmed with the amount of damage that that did. Let's have the Anacreon Scorpion target the Amazonia. Uh, the, the, yeah, the Amazon. I think this one's going to be overwhelmed by fires as well. Just give it a minute. Or she's going to flood. Flood it. Scorpion. Oh, the Anacria has taken some flooding. Cause? Two inch guns. Come on, S1. You can just surrender, yeah? Because at this point, it doesn't really matter that much. Amazon sinks to heavy flooding. That was fast. S1. Again, it doesn't really have any kind of counterplay here. It, it For some reason, it's not running away. And I think it wasn't even moving that fast before I destroyed slash damaged its engines. Effectively destroyed because they're underwater. Extensive fire. Flooding. Flooding took the kill. And now we're just hunting down the last transport. The Aegir. And the Aegir is having a bit of a rough day. As the Golka is just coming alongside. And those two inch guns are remarkably deadly. Oh, she is returning fire with four inch guns. <laughs> Even the four inch guns. 
have absolutely no hope of penetrating the armor belt on the torpedo boats. Now, I will be reporting this issue to the devs. So, by the time that you're watching this video, especially if it's in a few weeks or months after I published it, it is possible that the 12-inch armor belt on the torpedo boats has been patched out. As amusing as it is. Let's take down the Aegir. Potentially use a torpedo at, to get that done. I'm out turning my turrets. Oh, torpedo away. That ought to do it. Stern hit, ship done. So, <laughs> and a flash fire to boot. Two flash fires. So, um, the 12 inch armor belt on the torpedo boats. Very much a coincidence that I happened to find this. I was just going to do some torpedo boat joisting, uh, which I did. One loss, one victory. But this is definitely not the way it's supposed to be. Still very, very funny. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, why not? Just hit the subscribe button already. And if you want to join the channel to get some perks and, for example, have your name appear in the Transport Fever series, then hit the join button next to the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun with it, and I'll see you soon for another video.